All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Virtual Coffee Break with Tanisha. How's everybody doing? How was your 4th of July? Anybody go out and see fireworks? Michelle, where'd you go? I actually went to a friend's house nearby. We did um, what we always call our impromptu pool parties. And she had um, uh, access to fireworks, like, the, like she said, 180 degrees. So from Disney, Epcot, Omni, wow. Volterra. I mean, it was like a panoramic view. It was awesome. Wow, that is awesome. Did y'all do any grilling? Yeah, we were kind of like, we have been eating so much. We were like, mm, just hot dogs, something simple. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. Awesome. Anybody else have a great 4th of July? What'd you do? Nobody else? We, we have grilled um, the Monday, the Monday before so we can relax on the 4th of July and just watch fireworks. Nice. Nice. We had fireworks right here on the golf course. I was too tired to get up. I'm so over the fireworks thing. I used to work at an amusement park. They did fireworks all the time. So they don't wow me. Uh, Jace had a sleepover with some friends and none of them wanted to get off the computer to go watch the fireworks either. So eh, it was a relaxing day. But anyway, so today, everybody, we are going to talk about five ways to stay motivated. Ooh. Anybody have a hard time or sometimes struggle with staying motivated? Let, let's let's be honest and transparent. Anybody struggle with motivation? Benita, talk about it. And then Andrew. Um, it's, I don't know. It's like sometimes I maybe because I, I didn't believe in myself. Mm -hmm. um, and then two, it's like, not to say I'm by myself, but um sometimes I do feel like I'm by myself mm -hmm. so um just to you know try to keep up with things and read and you know trying to you know do like right now I'm in boot camp um I'm on my last week so that motivated me just a little bit but I know that we're doing things to stay in have our um uh, make it a habit yeah so to get online that's a struggle for me sometimes that <laughs> People looking at me, they call me like, I just saw you on TikTok. I said, because that's part of my, in the boot camp thing. So I just start doing like advertising our opportunity meetings on TikTok. So it, it's a struggle. It's a struggle, but I'm I'm pressing my way through. Good, good. For y'all and, you know, my team um, and my director and stuff. But I still got to try to push myself. Right. So and hard. you got to remove that word try. You don't said it like five times, but we got, I'm going to keep smacking your hand with the ruler like they did in a, a Catholic school with me. <laughs> Angela. I'm doing. I'm doing. <laughs> Angela. Yeah. Tell me about yeah. you. Do you have struggling with staying motivated? Just getting off the couch after work. Staying motivated. So when you get I'm off like, of work, you, are you feeling burnt out? Like you don't have any energy to work for yourself? Definitely. Right. So that that part right there is mindset. And you got to look at the bigger picture when it comes to that. And think about it. A lot of times for those people who still work a job, you sometimes you go into work early, right? Just type guilty in the chat if this is you. Have you ever gone into work early? Have you ever stayed late? Have you ever worked through your lunch? Just type guilty in the chat, be honest. Have you ever not taken your 15 minute breaks? Have you ever gone in on your, you know, your day off to help them out? Cause they were short staff. So why is it that you are so willing without hesitation to do that for someone else? so that they can buy their next vacation home, their next bins, their next whatever. But from five to nine, you can't do for yourself. You know what that is? I call it, it's, I call it a slave mentality. Okay. Seriously, 
you willing yeah. to build somebody else's dream, but you don't want to. And I'm not saying you specific, Angela. I'm talking to anybody. Listen, if the shoe fits, wear it. Just say out your amen. Why is it you're willing to go above and beyond to build somebody else's dream and you're not willing to even put a tenth of that same effort to building your own dreams? That means you were programmed and you have that slave mentality. Oh, I'm going to do it for master. I ain't going to do nothing for myself. We got to break out. It's a generational thing. You got to break out of that. And if you look at it like that, maybe that will help change your mindset. But seriously, the, the CEOs of this corporation, they good. You're the one that's struggling. Michelle? Okay, was having an issue come off mute. Okay. <laughs> you hit it around the head because, I mean, we chatted about this before, and it really, and there were certain things that you have said to me over time that just really sticks with me. And it literally comes down to that programming. And, you know, the different times I've run into those situations with lack of motivation or not really pushing myself to the extent of what I need to push myself. I was like, okay, why is it that I was doing it over here without even the blink of an eye? Like you said, going in early, staying late, working through lunch, um, even to the point where I ended up in emergency surgery because I was working so hard on projects and not taking care of my health and not eating properly. And then blink, this is happening to me. And what did I do? As soon as I went back, started back into the whole same stuff. So like, if I could work that hard for someone else, I had to keep stopping and looking at what was slowing me down. And it was the programming. It was me now understanding not only having a DMO, but effectively working that DMO. Understanding what to have those motions, where have those moments where there's going to be a lack of motivation. And understanding right. that I need to work through that because my ultimate goal, my ultimate dream is so important. I want to see it for myself. I want to see it for my team. And so therefore it was, you know, there are different times where I have to sit down. My father says, it's fine for you to have a conversation with yourself. When you start answering yourself is mm -hmm. when you may want to go get checked out. But, <laughs> but it's been those scenarios that's made me stop and really look at and understanding that there may have been a lack of motivation a month ago. That wasn't going to be the last time. But knowing that it's going to come up again and staying focused on how I need to shift my DMOs what I need to be plugging into that really keeps me focused, staying mm -hmm. plugged in, but also understanding that that process is going to evolve in different ways and to be ready for whatever's coming to absolutely. understand what I have access to, to to stay on track. Yep, absolutely, absolutely. And listen, I'm not going to say it's y'all's fault that y'all been programmed to accept slavery mentality. It's not your fault. Literally, you have been programmed and it's something that has happened over time, very subtly, and you don't even realize you've been programmed to accept that slave mentality. It's happened to all of us. However, when you know better, you do better. So I'm here to tell you what's been going on and, what, and part of what's contributing to you not being motivated to work your business, but you're willing to work somebody else's business, right? And it, start, it starts easy. I remember working um, when I was working in corporate America and they were behind on claims or something like that. And it was this big rah, rah, oh, okay, we're all gonna you know, work some extra hours to get the backlog done. And we're gonna buy you pizza so you don't have to worry about eating. We're all excited. What? When I look back at that, it's like, girl, you should have taken your behind home. Seriously. Right. And then it went into, oh, now it's mandatory. No, ain't, my job, my hours are nine to five. Ain't nothing mandatory. You can't make me stay away from my family to build your corporation. Like what? I recently had a one-on-one -on -one with someone and they were telling me, sharing with me, and this is a perfect example. So I want, I'm sharing this with you so that you could be aware of what you may be doing. But this person would, they're hourly and they would clock out and still put in another two hours to get the work done because their boss said that, you know, they had certain goals they had to hit. I, I, I almost went through the computer screen. I was like, no, 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 no. 
First of all, it's illegal for you to be hourly and working off the clock. But number two, how can your company I'm sorry, you picking up? Know okay, sorry. Yeah, it's now. Divorce. <laughs> how can your company know that they need to hire more people if you working off the clock to meet the goal? They thinking everything's good. Right? So it's little things like that that you just got if your hours are whatever your hours are, when your shift is over, clock out. I want y'all to type in the chat. Today I am done with the slave mentality. Because that's what it is. No more working through your lunch. When it's time for your lunch break, be on your lunch break. Unless you want to work your business during your lunch, that's cool. But no more working for corporate America on your lunch break. Stop it. Be done with the slave mentality. I know here in Florida, we were entitled to two 15 minute breaks. Take your 15 minute breaks. I don't care if you have nothing to do, go sit in your car. But stop giving them people all your time. And when the end of your shift is over, clock out and walk out. That work will be there tomorrow. Because they don't give up about you. So why are you giving them all the extra when you have this business that you have not been giving enough time to in order to hit your goal? Stop doing that. Today, I am done with the slave mentality. Stop. Stop helping your CEO buy their next BMW. Stop letting your CEO pay for cash for their kids college tuition while yours is struggling with student loan debt. Slave mentality. We got to stop that. All right. Let's get in to this five ways to stay motivated. All right. Staying motivated is key. It gets us going and keeps us going even when we can't see the light at the end of the proverbial tunnel. Motivation that motivation is that inner sense of keep going. It takes effort to get from where you are to where you want to be. And many obstacles crop up on both our on our path to success. The truth is that saying, staying motivated is exponentially harder than simply getting fired up, especially when the goal is unclear, distant, or difficult to achieve. Additionally, life throws in many surprises that can set us back and make us question our motivation and ultimately our goals. Do I really have to push myself so much? Is it all worth my time? Do I want it enough to keep going? When doubt creeps in, it's easy to lose the initial excitement, burn out and give up on the goal. How many of you have questioned whether this was even worth it? I know I had in the beginning. I'm like, was this worth it? Do I really got to work this hard to get this? I've been there. The reason some people quit pursuing their goals while others successfully reach theirs is the difference in the motivation that drives them. And that is so key because if you are on the um, corporate calls with Mr. Bradley and he's interviewing um, these new directors, one of the first questions he asks them is what drives you? Because he recognizes that what drives people is what keeps them going when life happens. The right or sustainable motivation comes from the inside out, is supported by well-defined priorities and goals, and provides a strong emotional connection to the desired outcome. Different studies have shown that in the long run, in the long run, extrinsic it, I'm sorry, Different studies have shown that in the long run, intrinsic motivation is more sustain sustainable than extrinsic. It doesn't mean that external rewards do not work. 
we just value our intrinsic drives more. That's That was key. Motivation drivers can be classified in a number of categories, but when we talk about sustainable motivation, self-interest and concerns for others are the ones that are worth mentioning the most as they relate to selfish and selfless motivation. Individually, both drivers have advantages and downsides, but when they work in synergy, the most sustainable motivation and the highest level of performance are possible. For instance, you are most likely to get the promotion you want when not only do you care to improve your standing in the company, but also you want to please your parents or your spouse or make sure your kids can go to a good school. So there has to be some type of external motivation outside of yourself, basically. Before we jump into some practical strategies for keeping motivation strong on the way to your goal, one thing needs to be mentioned. Just as the house built on a weak foundation will not stand for long, motivation based on unclear goals or poorly defined desired outcome will flag in no time. You have to have a strong why for why you're doing this business. And it has to be a clear goal. Like it can't be a goal. You can't say, oh, well, you know, like if, if you're um, upline, your director or whatever asks you, you know, what are your financial goals? Your answer can't be, oh, I just want to be comfortable. What? Comfortable is not an amount. It's not quantitative. You can't, what, what is comfortable? $5 a day is comfortable to a homeless person. Your goals have to be very clear. They got to be smart goals, specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and timely. So a lot of you are not accomplishing your goals or staying motivated because you haven't even identified what it was. You don't even know why you're working this business. You know it's a good opportunity. You recognize that, right? You love travel, right? You love the, the culture that we have here, but why are you doing it? That is key. That is why the first thing of the 15-day quick start is the game plan interview. What is your why for starting this business? Because if people don't have that reason, they, what's going to what's gonna motivate them after working nine, 10 hours a day, sitting in traffic, come home, got to cook? What's going to motivate them to now work their business after they've gone through all of that? Set your goals according to what your priorities are and have a plan that will help you through. Know the answer to your whys why this is a good or why i'm sorry why this is a good or right goal to have why you need to achieve it why achieving it is important or desirable for you or those you care for and so on once you set a strong foundation you can use the following tips to help you sustain your motivation until you succeed the other thing i would add to that is there needs to be a consequence if you don't hit your goal. That's another part of motivation. What's the consequence, right? If you don't go to work, you show up late, you don't put in 110%, you already know the consequences, you're going to get fired. <laughs> so isn't that some motivation to get up early and get to work on time, right? Because there's a consequence to it. Well, you need to put in your mind and write down on paper, what is your consequence to you not hitting your goals in your business? And it needs to be a strong consequence because here nobody can fire you, it's your business, right? So maybe your consequences, you know, if, if I don't hit directorship, my child is gonna have a ton of student loan debt because they're gonna have to take out a loan if they wanna go to college, right? That's a strong consequence. So you got to think of what that is for you. All right, so let's go into number one. Any comments so far? Any comments or feedback so far on this? You step, you stepping on all my toes and fingers. That's it. Ouch. Okay, good, Benita. Thank you for being transparent. 
and you're, yeah, and you're definitely, I think that uh, I was kind of like watching the scream in some instances, but I know some eye popping. It's like shaking the head and yes, this is exactly on point. Yep, yep. All right, so let's get into these five things. Number one, put it in writing. Identify what you want and put it in writing. Be as clear and specific as possible, including both quantitative measurable and qualitative feeling or ex experience aspects. Once you write it down, keep it somewhere in sight. We make plans and make promises to ourselves to follow through, but if it's just in our minds, we tend to forget both plans and promises as soon as life gets busy. <laughs> Ain't that the truth? Putting things in writing holds you accountable to your goals. It also serves as a reminder of all the progress you have made. I think that's very important. We got to celebrate the successes along the way. Right. You you may have a goal of, you know, I want to finish Gold Builder by the end of July. And, you know, let's say you have, you know, four more people. Well, celebrate that last person. That last person got you closer to your goal. Right. You may not hit Gold Builder yet, but doesn't that one person that you just enrolled get you close to Gold Builder? Celebrate that. Right. You may have a goal to. Um you know, acquire a certain amount or a certain amount of bookings, right? Financially, you want to make sure you book $30,000 in travel sales, you know, this year. And maybe you just got your certification for Barbados. Celebrate that. Isn't that getting you closer to your goal? Because now you are elevating your, um, your expertise and now you'll be able to market that to attract that next group booking. Right, so you have if you don't write it down and it's just in your mind that does make it more challenging to recognize the small wins along the way to the bigger goals does that make sense can anybody relate to that Shamika. I was going to say writing it down helps when life does start to happen and things start to happen you could like I got my vision board. And I got my weekly goals and I got my why. Sometimes you just got to walk past that even when you're mad and just read it and look at it. And so it definitely helps bring you back when you do have those times where you just like you feel like you're all over the place or you're unfocused or things are going on. So I have to take time each day and just come over here, and look at everything I got going and look at the things that I need to do. And, and it, it brings me right back to that. So it, it helps when life is lifey. Absolutely, absolutely. And, you know, some of you may not believe like I believe or whatever, but uh, there's a book that says, write it down and make it plain. Like seriously, like that is written. And then here's also um, a business target that says that you need to write it down and make it plain, make it specific, make it clear. Why? Because once you write it down, the universe conspires to make it happen. But if it's in your head, if it's just in your head, it, it, it just, I'm telling you, vision boards work. Has anybody on here, honestly, have written out a vision board, made a vision board, and you were able to check off everything on the vision board at some point, whether it took a year, two years, but because you had it written down, you were able to go check, did that. Caitlin, can you talk about it, please? Yes. So recently, this year, I made my vision board, and it's over on my wall. And I put Cosmel on there. And I've never been to Mexico. I was like, I'm going to Mexico this year. And I hadn't planned anything. I didn't know how I was going to Mexico or anything. And my friend called me for a cruise in June. And I said, she's like, we cruising to Cosmel. And that was on my vision board. Wow. And I got to go to Cosmel. So, yes. And that's not like the first. But I was just looking over there in my vision board. And she said, just look at it. And I was like, Cosmel is on there, not Mexico, wow. Cosmel. And that's where we went. Very specific, right? That's yeah. what's up. Anybody else? 
make a vision board and you've been able to literally check things off because they've come to pass? Anybody else want to share? Yes, I have actually. Um, I used to do it a lot even before I got into business and I would just, just check down stuff. And we was just talking about the other day that I like plugging in and, you know, listening to the leaders. It brings you back to that point because I had forgot all about it. But this vision board, I got some serious, some some uh, what some aggressive goals on there. So this one taking a little more work, but I am able to check off stuff and putting the dates on there, like you um suggested, it's definitely a help. It's like okay, do you you miss this goal? But do you want to be a month behind? Or do you want to be a week behind your goal? Right. So <laughs> that part. Yes, I have. Yes, thank you, Shamika, for bringing that up. The vision boards have to have dates on it. This is not a whole bunch of magazine clippings with pretty colors and stuff. They got to have dates on it of when you're going to accomplish. There's Benita sharing her vision board, right? They got to have the dates on it. If the dates aren't on it, it's just a wish. Once you put a date on it, that makes it a goal. And just like Shamika shared, you may have a certain date like June 30th and you haven't hit it. We don't go and change the date. No, you just have to say, do I want to be, you know, a month behind of hitting this goal or a year behind of hitting this goal? No, keep going. That just means you didn't put enough effort into it and you got to keep going. Right, Michelle? Now, I'm loving this because um, I was one that did not believe in, I mean, I would do my affirmations and all that type of stuff, but I was not one that was a total believer in the visuals. And the virtual board. So yeah, this past year I did do the um, vision board. I am shocked because it does. I mean, certain times I'm sitting here and I may be telling myself, I don't want to continue. I'm tired for the day. And can I go play or whatever may be running through my head? I'll look up at that vision board. I'm like, no, I want that condo. Because I mean, I've already did the move from Maryland to Florida. So yeah, check that's done. But now putting those visuals in front of me and different times that I may, I, I would say for lack of a better way of frustrated, but just, okay, looking up and seeing that vision board and it's like, this is the why, this is why you're going to keep going because that condo is coming to fruition. You know, everything else I have on that list, it's coming. I see it coming, right. but I just get kind of tickled because I'm like, girl, you fought against these vision boards for the last 10 years. And I got the little signs and placards around the apartment about what my monthly income goal is. And I look over it and I'm like, you missed the date, but you know what? It's still coming. Yes, I was looking at my business account the other day and I'm like, it is looking the way I want it to look. I just need yeah. several more or let's say 10 more zeros at the end. And <laughs> good to go. But it's those visuals that it's making me more of a believer and understanding that it's it, it, even to the point where I even put it on my calendar, my goals. So like a reminder will pop up. Your goal for such and such is, um, is set for 10 o'clock today. I'm like, okay, let me get to work. <laughs> But even, um, it's like now I'm putting every every direction I can think of where I may see something that's going to keep that motivation or keep that focus going. I put it up. That's and this is a world of difference. That's good. Um, where is this condo going to be? I am still looking around Florida because you know it's got to have a view of the beach. Florida is too big. I need you to narrow that down. Are we staying in this area? It's not close enough to the beach, honey. It's not, I, I got, my look, what I have said a majority of my adult life was that my ultimate dream was to wake up, walk out on my deck, and see nothing but water. I love it. All so right, make I sure gotta make it happen. Bedroom so I can come stay. You got it. You got <laughs> it. <laughs> All right, y'all. Number two. This is a key. This is the one. Y'all write this in all caps. Minimize distractions. Minimize distractions. When you are disorganized, you cannot make much progress with anything because your attention is divided between so many things. Procrastination can become a problem because you waste your energy on matters that don't really matter. Nothing is more distracting and demotivating than a cluttered mind. If you find yourself running in circles, hit pause and take a moment to think back to your priorities. When you know your priorities, it is very easy to trim off all the time eaters and energy zappers that keep you from moving forward. Ooh, ooh, ooh. 
I think that's one of the biggest problems for a lot of people is that they do not minimize the distractions. And in fact, when I'm doing my onboarding, <clears throat> I usually tell people, you have to set your household up for success. You gotta have a family meeting with everybody that lives there. They need to know what you're doing, why you're doing, whatever it is. And you need to let them know how they can support you in that effort, whether it be delegating some nights that someone else is responsible for cooking dinner or you delegate, you know, the kids, you know, they have to clean the house or do the laundry, right? Everybody need, you gotta set your household up for success because if you don't, those things will become the distraction. Oh, I couldn't get on a team meeting because I was in the middle of doing laundry. What? What? Wouldn't you like to have enough money coming in where you could pay somebody to do the laundry so that's not a thing anymore? Oh, I had to cook dinner. Well, if you work your business, you will put yourself in a position where you have a personal chef. Just saying. The reasons, the excuses that you typically give yourself for why you're not doing what you need to be doing in your business are usually the reasons for why you need to do the business. Does anybody on here right now feel like they have some distractions that they have been avoiding and that they they recognize now that they need to address them erica i am i have distractions but i think what i'm where i'm struggling is that my distractions i don't know if they should be called distractions because it's work it's school it's things that i absolutely have to do so i'm struggling with being organized and not procrastinating and being overwhelmed but it's like the laundry has to get done and if you don't have anyone to delegate it if it does not get done it gets you know now you got five or six loads and the dishes have to be made and I have a a four-year-old and he has to be taken care of and so it's like I have distractions but I have to figure out how to organize them because I cannot get rid of them right so Erica it, it comes down to scheduling. You only okay. have 24 hours in a day. You can't make time and you cannot find time. All you can do is prioritize the time. So you schedule and block time to do the laundry. Okay. And you only do the laundry yeah. during the time that's designated to do the laundry. <clears throat> right? When it comes to cooking, you got to do smart cooking. It's called, um, what, what do y'all call it? I used to do it all the time. Meal prep. Meal prepping. Meal prep. Meal. You learn how to meal prep. You learn how to meal prep. You, you change. When I started this bit, I used to be that person who used to watch hours and before I got into business, hours and hours of the food network. You couldn't tell me I wasn't a professional chef. Right, I had all the seasonings you could think of, some I couldn't even pronounce. I had all the kitchens and gadgets and I had all of that stuff. And I would buy, you know, the, the, the packages of meat, all different types of meat and vegetable. I used to do all of that stuff and spend hours, you know, prepping and preparing meals and stuff. But once I became the CEO of a business, I ain't got time to cook every night. Who got time? Ain't nobody got time for that. I had to change my whole grocery list once I started this business. And, and guess what I started doing? Crock pot meals. Yep, easy. Throw it all in there. And there's a ton, there's unlimited crock pot meals that you can do so that you're not spending hours in the kitchen. And now you have food for several days. On Sundays, I used to cook two different types of meat two different types of vegetables and, and, you know, either rice or mac and cheese or something like that. And now the food is in the fridge. What? You don't want to eat chicken for the whole week. Okay. Well, guess what? There's beef too. pick one. You don't want mixed vegetables. Okay. There's green beans in there too. So now all they had to do was heat up, but Erica, we, we can't make excuses instead of you have to change your mind to say, how can I make this happen? What can I do differently so that this situation works better for me? 
The other thing is a lot of times some of the things that we have going on in our life that are distractions are self-inflicted. Nobody's making you do it. You chose to do it. You you volunteering to be on, on the school volunteer list. That was you. you. You signed up to be on the usher board. That was you. You volunteered to be on this committee. Of that. That's you. You decided you wanted to go back to school for X, Y, that was you. Nobody made you do these things. You chose to do those things. So when you're feeling overwhelmed, you can't blame nobody but yourself. Remember, no matter what, you are in control of your life. Even when it comes down to the job that you're doing. First of all, your job shouldn't be a distraction. You're scheduled to work a certain schedule. And that's it. When you leave, you leave. So to, I don't, I don't accept the excuse that oh my job is the distraction. No, you either work nine to five or three to eleven or whatever. When you leave, you leave. The question is, what are you doing with that excess time outside of your job? Because when you're at work, you just got to do what you got to do. But outside of that, that's you, Shamika. I was going to say, you preaching to the choir over here, but um, <laughs> it's, it's kind of like what you said. People come into business with different baggage. And sometimes you know beforehand that you should have been dealt with this baggage, but sometimes new things arise. Um, and so definitely dealing with the baggage. Um, but I wanted to say with her, because I also have a four-year-old. So what I do is I schedule my, my schedule is works behind him so when he's taking a nap i know i'll be able to make phone calls because you know he's sleep mm -hmm. so i get the phone calls out the way i also have a time when i wake him up i have a time when i cook so i cook to make sure we're eating for about two or three days so i don't have to constantly cook all the time and it's been times where i get on the zooms or the pbr where i'm just starting to cook so i have some chicken in the oven or <laughs> something and then I'm able to pay attention and take notes and stuff so you do have to prioritize because I, I definitely know how it could go especially with a, a little child and so I I even schedule times when I read to him I read to him for 15 minutes I read for 15 minutes you know I have all of that in my schedule and I say that has really helped me a lot with becoming um calendar driven because it's like okay if it's not on my calendar I'm not doing it <laughs> point blank period and I have got my kids to the point where they use those were my distractions my teenage kids when they be like mom can you take me here can we can we go here can you pick us up and so I have to tell them okay let me know ahead of time so I can put it on my schedule mm -hmm. and so I know what I'm doing because it's not on my schedule the answer is going to be no exactly exactly write this down y'all be calendar driven I promise you that is the only way to be successful in this business is to be calendar driven. If you just do whatever you feel like doing at the time you feel like doing it, you're going to fail miserably. I'm telling you now, there's no exceptions to that rule. If you speak to any of the top income earners in this company, I promise you, I bet my house on it, they are working from a calendar. So if you're not, that's part of your problem. Benita? That is my biggest problem. And I was online um, photocopying, um, printing out calendars to see which style I want. Um, because I, I, and it's so funny you said that because I had this last night, like, okay, now how am I start, starting to do this? Because I let go of some stuff that you said when you was preaching to us and I'm amen and, um, because it's me who joined the, you know, the usher board, this, that, and all that. <laughs> you stepped on my toes again. <laughs> Ouch. And I was like, okay, you know what? And like you was telling me about the, um, um, past the saps. Mm -hmm. I mean, um, when she had, um, let go for five years to get herself together. And I'm like, you know what? That's what I'm going to do too. I'm going to, I have to start doing me first. 
That's why now my phone used to call around 12. Everybody was like, I know you want, you busy from 12 to one, you write about that. So it's like, you know, I'm putting, like it's in my brain, but now I'm gonna put it on paper yeah. to let it be existed. And um, I'm learning, I'm learning. I'm, I'm, I'm getting there, I'm getting there. But you showing sure up preaching to us hard now. <laughs> I'm just telling y'all the truth. I will always tell you the truth, good, bad, or ugly, because I want y'all to win, right? Yes, I'm, I haven't hit where I want to be yet, um, but thank God I'm not where I used to be. And I want everyone to experience, you know, freedom, right? The, that's the first slide of, of our presentation, time, freedom, personal freedom, and financial freedom. And so if you don't make these adjustments now in your business, you, you won't have those freedoms. And as much as I love the money and stuff that I make, I promise you, time freedom is the thing that I appreciate the most in this business. Yes, I'm thankful that I can put my bills on auto pay, and that is a huge blessing. But the time freedom, you cannot put a price tag on time freedom. You cannot. And there's so many times that, you know, different situations pop up, and I'm just so thankful I have the time to do what I need to do when I need to do it. And I don't have to request time off. You know, even, even when I um, was fighting to stay healthy after Eagle Weekend, that, that viral, viral infection had me literally on my behind for 14 plus days. I could not do anything but lay down. I wasn't even on social media. You saw no posts from me for about two weeks. My neighbor was concerned. She called me and she's like, is everything okay? I haven't seen you on social media. And I said, no, I've, I've been sick. And she's like, I knew something was wrong. But I think back, if I had not said yes to this $200 opportunity, if I had not used the schedule to manage my time so that I could go after the bag and this time freedom and retire myself and my husband, and then I had caught this viral infection, being out of work for 14 plus days, maybe probably not having enough sick time to cover it so now i'm dipping into my vacation time to cover it if i have that left because you know when you have kids they eat up your sick time and your vacation time it just would have looked so much different if i hadn't done the things that i needed to do to put myself in the position that i'm in right now and i want all of you to have that and so yeah, I'm just always going to give it to you straight up, no chaser. I'm going to tell you what you need to hear and not what you want to hear because I care. When you win, I win. I can't win unless y'all win. Right? Your family goals are my family goals. So you got to be willing to get uncomfortable and do the things that need to be done in order to win. Let's jump into number three. This is a good one. Be aware of the potential pitfalls. Be aware of the potential pitfalls. Ask yourself what obstacles you might encounter while making progress towards your goals. It is important to be aware of all potential stumbling blocks because you can then decide how to deal with these obstacles. And when you actually run into them, you will be able to eliminate them without losing your motivation. After you note down your potential obstacles, the next step is to categorize them into three groups. Number one, those that you can control. Number two, those that you can influence. And number three, those you can neither control nor influence. Don't waste your energy on the things you cannot fight. I'm gonna repeat that, because some of you are spending your time doing that. Don't waste your energy on things you cannot fight. Instead, focus on what you can, focus on what can be done and keep moving forward. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Some of you are self-sabotaging yourself because you are putting your energy on things you cannot control. Some of you got grown children 
and you all in their business. It's none of your business. I mean, when I say grown, I'm talking about these, these kids are married, got their own families, and you making their issues your issues. Stop. You can't, you can't control what they got going on. You may be able to influence, you know, offer suggestion if it's asked of you. Mom, can we talk? I got this going on. What do you think I should? But some of y'all, listen, you should be. Da, da, da. Stop. You got your own life. They grown. Mind your business. Literally, mind your business. Just say out your amen. Focus on what chime in on that one. You know, I got two adult adult sons and thank you because I'm telling you, my two, we always laugh. It's like, it's like we got to put our time on the calendar just to connect. We all doing our thing and they are so supportive of my business. Now, when I first started, they were kind of like, you know, because now it was, I mean, especially with the grandkids. You know, they knew they could call mom. Can you do this? Mom, can you keep the kids? Mom, this. And I'm like, yep, because you know, I want to spend time with them and so on. But once I got this business going and I had to start focusing on, you know, what I wanted to do from Maryland to Florida, and this is my time, my turn. I didn't gave y'all everything I've got. Y'all are, you know, went through college, you got your careers going, the oldest one's married. I'm like, no, I can be selfish right now. And it took them a second. And I remember talking with the oldest one at one point. He's like, well, it seems like all you care about is the business and so on and so on and so on. So we had a good conversation and, you know, it, and he, he really got it. You know, he walked away with, okay, this is something she really wants. And they have always said, you've given us so much. But now he was seeing that I was literally putting myself first. And it's been awesome. But we had that conversation. And I think it was, if not last convention, but maybe convention before, where um, they had the session about the agreement with between husband and wife or whatever, or with family. Mm-hmm. But I had already had that conversation with them. But now they know. The oldest called about two or three weeks ago to say, Mom, uh, just want to make sure we're on your calendar. We're coming down in October. And I had to bust out laughing. That's good. That they know. Reach Respect out. the this calendar. Is, right. This is my vision. And I'm going to, now I don't doubt that they have heard that part about the legacy, because he even asked at one point, where'd that stand? <laughs> <laughs> but they're getting it. And that was the whole point. I mean, I think I was a little bit more reserved about having that conversation, but I'm so glad we did. I love the support. And literally, they're doing their thing. I had to remind my oldest granddaughter from time to time, because she may mention some things that, so that's your family stuff. We got that. But you, you, your family, I know. But if mommy and daddy wanted me to know about it, they would have told me. Right. It's not anything super right. confidential, but it's kind of like, Gigi, let me let you know such and such. But it's that whole point. Too many of us, especially moms, I think single moms too. I think any mom, because we love our family. We give ourselves to our family, but then put ourselves on the back burner when it's something that we want. It's okay. Get out here. They're going to appreciate it a lot more when they see, when they reap the benefits of everything you're doing. Yes, that's true. I love it. I love it. Shamika? Let me tell you about them phone calls that I had to get get rid of. Um, I might be talking to somebody right now. Have you ever just had somebody to call you, even if it's a family member, and all they want to just talk about is complain about what's going on, complain, 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 but you never hear a solution. You never hear, okay, well, I can do this and I can do that. And even if you offer it, they don't want to hear it. So I had to cut those conversations um, short, even if it was my mama. Yep. Listen, we I got five minutes for you. I tell them I got a quick five minutes. Um, I'm just calling you back. Um, <laughs> what's going on? Well, complain, complain. Well, you know what, mom? Let me know when you find a solution and uh we'll talk back or I've come up with something for you. But right now I'm I'm working my business. I just took five minutes out to call you real quick to make sure everything's okay. Yeah. And I tell you, my phone do not ring. Okay, it does not ring anymore, and it's it's awesome. Yeah. Because I'm like, let's focus on what's what we can do to change it. Okay, now you're here. Okay, let's not dwell in where you are right now. Because I can do a lot of complaining myself, but I don't I don't do that from being in this business. I think about, okay, what do I need to be doing so this won't happen again? Or I, I need to take my mind off of this because I can't do anything. So what am what am I doing? So we have to get rid of those phone conversations as well, too. That's not income producing. 
Absolutely. Thank you for sharing that. And just to piggyback off of that, write this one down. Set boundaries with people. Some of y'all are just letting people just abuse your time, your emotions, your money, <clears throat> taking you out of your peace. You have to set boundaries with people. I was recently having a conversation um, with someone and somebody had called them and just like what Shamika was saying, it was all negative, but it was like messy, like trying to trying to be messy, you know, talking about this person and that person. Unsuccessful people talk about other people. Successful people are talking about ideas. So the moment you have someone calling you and all they're doing is yapping about somebody else, gossiping, being messy, set the boundaries and say, you know what? What they do is none of my concern. Right now, I'm focused on making a better me. You know, I, I, I don't even want to hear none of that. If what if any if you're not saying anything that is going to help me get to my next level, I don't have time for it with all due respect. I'm just I, I don't have that kind of time. Set boundaries with people. Exactly, Michelle. You know, I'm big on that. That's like my 2023 phase phrase. Protect your peace at all costs, but you got to set boundaries with people. And a lot of times it is your family that you need to set these boundaries with, including your mother and your father and your grandparents and your children and your spouse. You got to set boundaries. My whole family knows what my boundaries are. I don't have those issues, but I had to set them. They had to know this isn't life ain't the same as what it used to be once i said yes to planet marketing things are different christina yeah i just wanted to say something because like even before this i've always had um a positive approach towards everything and i just always love the positive vibes around me and i only surrounded myself with positive vibing people and now doing this to be honest, I can't even hear the negativity from people around me. Like it gives me some type of weird feeling in my skin. Yeah. I don't even want to hear it. So I just, I just take the headphone out my ear, or even if it's like a meeting for my job and people are complaining about things or just anything like family, just calling, calling to talk about just stupid things that just don't have nothing. It's like, to me, if it doesn't have no progress towards me and what I'm aiming for right now, I don't even want to talk. And I mean, I'm sorry yeah. to be like that, but if it ain't talking about money, I don't even want to bother with it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> if you just calling me to just talk about, hey, what you're doing, I don't even have time to tell you how my life is going right now. I used to have that time. Right. I don't have that time now because the time I used to call them and just check on people, I'm traveling, I'm, I'm, I'm booking travel, I'm trying to recruit people, I'm trying to entice people and enlighten people. I don't have time for that no more and it's like I know I'm not being bogus to them and you know I had to go and bring that approach to my sister and my parents because both of them were just like calling me just about unnecessary things I just don't have time for that no more the time that I will talk I'm trying to make money <laughs> right. exactly I love it Christina I love it all right y'all number four we got two more embrace positivity practice positive self-talk and do things that make you happy. Because when you are happy, you feel more energized and motivated. Of course, unexpected and undesirable things can happen and they can negatively affect your attitude and resolve. Remember, negative self-talk and excessive self-criticism will only exacerbate matters and will further weaken your motivation. Positive self-talk, on the other hand, will help you bounce back faster to your usual self and continue to move forward as if nothing happened. Shamika? Ooh, 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 ooh. <laughs> this is so good. Uh, I just want to kind of share with y'all. So what I do in the morning to kind of wake up Facebook is I inspire people. I, I compliment them. Um, I may just say, hey, if if nobody told you, thank you. I'm just saying thank you today for all that you do. Keep going. And I promise you, I, when I wake up, you know, you all looking crazy, right? You probably not feeling your best sometimes. 
And so I promise you after that 10th time that I said that message to somebody, I'm excited and I'm motivated now. Mm -hmm. So at that, that last one, I'm like, oh, I got to keep going. I just feel so you are absolutely right when you even when you started talking in the beginning that intrinsic is very important and it has to be stronger especially yeah. when it comes to that positivity because the outside the extrinsic can 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 get in your head sometimes if it's right. not strong from the inside right so that's a that's a real good thing to see. embrace positivity because a lot of stuff can go on that we talked about that we can dwell on complaining and all of that stuff but when you embrace that positive positivity you think about those negative things in a positive way okay so how can I you know not be in this situation again what did I learn from it and so I have really taken on that mindset to just stay positive no matter what so this, this was good absolutely Beverly did I see your hand up Yes, ma'am. I threw it up, but I thought we were about out of time. But um, I just wanted to say what what I do, and I, I love this. Oh, thank you so much, um, Director Burke. One thing I do every morning, I write down three positive things that happen for me. And so it allows me to go to gratitude immediately. Mm -hmm. And I notice, I don't care how, how far down in the dumps I want to go, I can immediately shift now because of, you know, on my ability to always go to gratitude because in everything, there is gratitude. There's gratitude in, in the worst, what I think the worst situation, there's always some gratitude in it. And, you know, I, I'm going to just share this and I, 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 I'll be quiet. I uh, had to really leave my assignment, my job in March because um, it was I was in a sick building. I kept, and it was really impacting me. And so I left that job because they were not going to make any changes in that building. And I was not going to put myself at risk like that. And so my husband said, just run with your business full time. And so from March until now, you know, the team, our team has really grown. The, the right people have come along. It's impactful. We're doing things. I mean, I mean, I, just, I get chills to see where the movement has gone and the money has gone just in that short period. And that hasn't been a long time. And I could have really went in the dumps about that because that was like, okay, that, that income is gone. But you know what? That was the best thing that could have happened for me. So I'm so grateful. Good. I'm so proud of you, Beverly. And I have definitely have seen the growth. So keep running. Last one, number five, reward yourself. Everyone likes rewards. They make us feel happy, valued, and recognized. Rewards don't need to be big to have that positive effect on us. Sometimes even a scheduled break can serve as a reward. Little rewards here and there for whatever progress that you have made will give your motivation a good boost and allow you to maintain a positive outlook throughout your journey. Occasional rewards provide that instant gratification we all crave. I want to add a little spin to that. Also, denying yourself a reward until you hit a goal could be great motivation as well. You know, I have someone who um, they wanted to buy a new car. And I said, nope, wait till you hit director. You ain't buying nothing until you hit director. You, you this close. Let's focus on that, then go buy the car. Because they didn't need need to get the car right then. It wasn't like they didn't have any transportation, but they were in need of upgrading their vehicle. And I said, no, you're going for director. Wait until you hit directorship and then reward yourself with the car. So denying, sometimes we over reward ourselves. We just do whatever when we want because we can. But just because you can doesn't mean you should. You have to put some boundaries on yourself. And so that thing that you want that... And you know where I see the biggest issue? And I'm gonna end it with this. And Ruby, we're gonna start our one-on-one. -on -one. Um, the biggest problem that I see in our business is that people, and y'all might, yeah, I know I'm gonna catch some backlash on it. Y'all take too many damn trips. I get it. Travel is our product. Yep, I get it. Oh, well, Director Burke, you know, it attracts people to the business. I get it. 
But some of y'all spend more time traveling than you do working your business with income producing activities. I'm just saying. And and you're you're lying to yourself saying that, oh, I'm taking these trips because it's going to help me attract people to the business. You're lying to yourself. That's what you tell yourself to make yourself feel good about the income producing activities that you're not doing when you're not traveling. That's what it is. So let's call a spade a spade. Let's stop lying to ourselves saying that I need to take all these darn trips to build my business. It's bull crap. I know some of y'all didn't want to hear that. And like I said, I get it. Travel is our product. But I tell you, there's a lot of people hitting directorships and they ain't take a trip in like five years. Because they're grinding. They're building relationships. If you want to attract people who want to build, Taking a whole bunch of trips ain't going to do that. You're just going to attract more people who want to travel like you do. So now both of y'all traveling and ain't building the business. I'm just keeping it real. Say out your amen. That, but that's the truth. You taking all these trips, but, and, and here's how you can tell if this is you. You taking all these trips, but has your numbers moved? I'm just saying, because the proof is in the numbers. Men lie, women lie, numbers don't lie. You taking all these trips, but have your numbers moved. So just reflect on that. All right, that concludes virtual coffee break today. Everybody, did, was this helpful to anybody? Yes. Got some good nuggets? Bam. Yes, yeah. very helpful, thank you. Awesome, awesome. All right, you all have an amazing day and I'll see y'all, I'll be back on next Tuesday. Bye, everyone. You too, and thank stay you. On. Ruby, stay on. Thank Bye. you.